Hey guys, welcome back to another update of my Canadian Dividend Investing Portfolio series. It's been a little while since I have dropped in and made a video, so thank you for waiting if you have been watching these videos, and if this is the first one that you've seen, welcome to the channel. Basically what I do in these videos is I just go over my dividend investing activity as an amateur investor in Canada, and um, yeah, kind of just running through exactly what I've been doing ever since I started my account with zero dollars a couple of years, uh, about two years ago now. And uh, just going through all of the purchases I make, sort of the decisions why I decide to buy certain stocks and uh, tracking everything in this custom Google Sheet that I made. And there is a link in the description below where you can get a copy if you would like to also use it. Um, if you're having, if you are using this spreadsheet and you have any issues, my email is in the welcome tab. So feel free to shoot me an email. I will help you out with anything that's going wrong or help you to maybe customize it if there's like an obscure stock or something that you want to track. So yeah, uh, anyways, let's jump into my portfolio. Um, so I'm sitting around a stock value of about $73,595 with about $534 in cash and actually around 350 of this, uh, give or take, is all from dividends that I received at the end of June and the beginning of July. And then 200 is just uh, a deposit that I put in today. So I want to spend all of that, but I'll get into that in a little while. You can see most of the dividends here, or actually all of the dividends I've received so far in July. Every three months I have a really good month, and this is one of them. I get most of my payments on the 15th, and then there will be a few more coming in later in the month. But basically, the overall account is just barely in the green, up $180 out of $73,000, which is basically 0.24%. Um, just nice to see it not in the red. That's pretty comforting and uh, hopefully it will slowly climb and uh, we'll just see what happens. But yeah, basically the average yield of all of my portfolio is 4.44%. And for those of you who don't know it, basically for every $100 I have invested in this portfolio, every year I'll get paid $4.44 uh, through dividends from holding those uh, stocks. That's kind of a simple way to look at that number. And if you multiply that by the stock value, you see that I get about $3,268 per year in annual dividend payments. So this is totally passive income that I don't have to do anything. I just sit back and uh, collect the money as it comes. But you can see all of the payments I've received in here in total. What I'm doing is I'm reinvesting that all the time back into the companies to really get this compounding effect where I'm depositing my own money and reinvesting the dividends to really like build up my principal uh, to eventually get more and more passive income. So then when I really need to use it, I'll have a bunch of disposable cash flow and life will be good. So that's pretty much that. Um, taking a look at some of the dividends in here that I've recently received, like I said, I get a whole bunch on the 15th of July. And uh, some of them in my perspective are getting pretty big, like uh, AQN here, $47 in one payment. For me, that's quite a lot. Um, some over $30 and then a lot in the 15s and 20s. I'm kind of, uh, I would like to get all of my dividend payments above $10. Uh, I think that would just be nice for me to see. So that's something I'm just going to keep in the back of my mind as I decide which stocks to buy. But basically uh, the real um, decision making happens here in the portfolio tab. Uh, well, some of the decision making, I suppose. Uh, where I can kind of just sort it for different attributes. Right now I have it sorted here for the biggest winners at the top and the biggest losers at the bottom. And um, I can also sort by like the percent of holdings or something to get a bit, an idea of what my biggest positions are. And then as we go down the list, the positions get smaller and smaller. But I do quite like looking at it this way. It is just a bit uh, interesting to see which positions are doing really well. And if I scroll over to the right, I can get a slightly different picture here of the all-in performance. And this is basically going to include the dividends, whereas the unrealized gain and loss doesn't. And so you'll see slightly different things here, like we'll just pick on one company, perhaps Northland Power. Based on stock price alone, I'm down 0.3%. But overall, if you include the dividends, I'm up 2.42%. So it's a little bit of an unconventional metric, but it's something I like to pay attention to and just be aware because when I come in here and I see a whole bunch of scary red numbers, uh, if you include the dividends, it's not so bad. And I'm really my I'm really focusing on the overall portfolio value versus individual positions, but I do like to try to get most individual positions in the green for just unrealized gain loss or for all in performance. So when I'm looking at positions to buy here, um, there's a lot of different ways to go about it, but basically I just know that I want to buy more bank stocks, especially if I'm down on the individual position. So I was looking here at Bank of Nova Scotia for sure as a candidate to do buy. And another one I was looking at here was Granite. Um, Granite makes up uh, is a relatively big position of mine, almost 4%. 
Uh, they are down a little bit and I was kind of just eyeing them up. I'm not really crazy about adding too much real estate, but like I said, I do just want to get some of those dividend payments over $10 each just for the sake of it. And when I looked at the dividend tab, I noticed with um, Granite, which is right here, I was at 956 and I'm getting this monthly. So if I just buy two more shares, uh, that'll bump me up above $10 for each payment, which is kind of fun. And in here too, I was also kind of eyeing up which other ones were small. So PNZ, uh, Saveria, and Northland Power. And I know there are a couple others in here as well, but I'm not gonna just go crazy over this, but yeah, anyways. Uh, so kind of just looking at those for now. And also um, the other thing that I do like to check out is my extra spark lines tab here. And just kind of quickly scan through here. This has every stock or every position of mine uh, organized in the same order as the portfolio tab. So I do just like to come in here and kind of just check what's going on with the overall trend of things and just see if, uh, if, if a company is in the red for me, it might not actually be significant if like, you know, everything is down or something and uh, there might be a better opportunity. But yeah, something this is, uh, that I do like to check is in here as well. Looks like we're hitting, yeah, like in here, some crazy lows, like pretty much as low as the, the real like bottom of COVID as well. So interesting kind of to pay attention to. So yeah, let's jump into Wealth Simple Trade and buy some of these stocks. So in here, we got the same thing, everything going on. You can get a slightly different view of the portfolio in here. Um, you just buy one day, the one week. Um, and, and so on. Nice to see that it's actually going up because in the last little while, yeah, like here, the little three months down 10% and the one year we're basically just crossing back into the green, uh, you know, going up uh, my total portfolio value going above the net deposits, net deposits being the gray line and portfolio value being the green. So anyhow, interesting always to kind of check out this to get a slightly different view than the spreadsheet. But um, to get started, I did want to pick up some of Granite. So it's grt.un. I can't type properly. So here we go. Um, with these guys, I just want to pick up two. Like I said, that's going to bump me up above uh, $10 for my monthly dividend payments from this company. So I'm going to confirm that order. That's going to be done. And then I also did want to pick up Bank of Nova Scotia, which is bns.to. So these guys, um, I think with them, I want to pick up about, what's going on with the cart chart here? There we go. Um, I want to pick up about four of these, so it'll be about $300. So let's go ahead and make that order as well. Okay, we're going to confirm that in the tax-free savings account. All right, nice. Um, I'm just going to have to refresh my page to let this update. Give me one second. There we go. Um, I'm on a Wi-Fi hotspot right now from my phone. Um, and so it's just kind of the connection isn't great. Normally that would update automatically. Uh, but basically another one I wanted to throw in a little bit of cash to probably just one of Northland power So that's gonna be about half of the cash that I have left. So for $40. We'll just take one on a market buy and uh, confirm that Okie dokie And with the rest of the money, I'm just gonna buy a few shares of Saveria. Saveria is uh, one of my most beat up companies They're actually doing pretty well up 2.63% in the last day, but if you look at their their chart they have really dropped off from their all time high there. And I'm personally down about 25% uh, on this position. So any amount that I put in is pretty much a good deal compared to what I used to you know, be okay with spending on this company. So I should have enough for a couple shares in here, probably three, let's see if I can get that. I might have to do a limit buy. Let's see if I can get that on a market buy. Nice, okay, cool. So I just want to now pop into the activity tab and in here, uh, I'm going to just open up some of these and I basically want to write down this information and transfer it into the Google sheet. And that's all going to go into my transactions tab. So we're just going to scroll down here all the way to the very bottom and give ourselves a little bit of rows to work here and I'll save you the time and I'll just drop these all in in one. And once all of these are in, I'm just going to double check that the totals add up because that is calculated automatically. It's a good check to make and it's looking good for me for what I saw in Wealthsimple. So then the last thing to do is to just pop back into the summary tab and take a look here pretty much at the annual dividend income. 
And at the beginning of the video, we were sitting around $3,268 per year, and now we're at about $3,293. So that's an increase of about $25 per year. And totally passive tax-free income, as this is in the tax-free savings account, and this number is only going to grow with time as I reinvest it back into more dividend stocks each time I receive the dividends and I continue to deposit more money and these dividends naturally grow over time, meaning the companies will decide to pay me more per share generally over time as a lot of the stocks I hold are dividend growth stocks. So guys, um, hopefully you found that interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you guys down in the comments and in the next video.